Though it may fuck me in the future and ruin my chances to fuck Colonel Sanders. I think I have to sit next to my best friend because they're my best friend and Colonel Sanders is just some guy I want to fuck and I respect my friendship more than that. You move to take your seat by Miriam. I'm so glad to have you near me to support me through the class. Of course my best friend who also I sit by. Colonel Sanders, he has such a magnetic personality and there's an OSU open right next to him. If you had sat there, you might have gotten to know him a little bit better. I never sacrifice our friendship. Besides, I'm sure I'll get a chance to talk to him later in the semester. I've got three whole days, it's like a lifetime. So you say, but now that Mary mentions it, that Colonel Sanders is just so darn dreamy. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Dick Flash, it's time for a pop quiz. Yeah, a pop quiz about me. This incredibly important surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you're ready for a life at culinary school. Keep your knife sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. If A train- Here comes the A train! <laughs> this traveling to point B, B train is traveling to point A. How important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Extremely look at you, Pop. Forest is to tree as chicken is to... Uh, probably feather, but these other two options are scaring me because they're either... It's such a dumb answer, it has to be that, or of course it's feather. A forest is just a lot of trees, so a chicken's a lot of feathers. That's right. What is the most efficient EG utensil ever created? Well, they mentioned sporks once. And I'm pretty sure KFC has sporks. That's right. What food is best for a broken heart? A pancake that looks like a silly face. Camel meat. Anything as long as it is prepared with love and not too much salt. That's right. Is Sprinkles a good boy? His talking dog teaches at a culinary school. He's the best boy. That's right. Perfect five out of five. Five out of five. I did it. Why'd I ever drop out of high school? I have no idea. Wow, I'll be honest, did you cheat? Look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's been impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Hot diggity, Jocelyn Fossum. You scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. All right, well. Wow, the cafeteria is, is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating, because that's what you do when you cook. You, you eat. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. You smell that? It must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I, can I, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. In honor of the new semester, I've prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. That must be the smell I smell. This my smell. Indeed, that smell. Oh, wow, look at that. Oof. You hold your breath waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this... Oh, wow. Yeah, that's good. Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. His contents glimmer in the light. Piled higher as huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to growl and, and as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. Eat at KFC, eat now. Go to your local KFC right now and eat some food. For years, I've been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. Well, you think you're stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshaw. Nah, my dude, nah. Just uh, drafting a, a last will testament in case uh, one of those ingredients is up. Poison. Got him. Haha. <laughs> wow, I hate him so much. He looks quite nervous to see if anybody else is laughing at a sick <laughs> Look at his fucking face. He's like, get to key. He's like, ugh. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, no, I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful, and at that moment, the only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. Oh, you fucking kawaii moe bitch, I'm gonna fucking kill you. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. Well, Van, Van the Man Man, if you don't want any. I'll take his. Well, hold on, I mean, I guess I'll try. 
try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face and he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now, there's enough everyone please, my fellow classmates dig in. Take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of his bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment. Try and identify every flavor. Savor the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Swim towards the light. Well, I want to be the best chef that ever was. To cook them is my real test and to eat them is my cause. So, I might do this. Or... I still don't want to fuck Colonel Sanders though. I feel like I'm doing everything but trying to fuck him, which is the goal. But I also want to be a chef. My parents paid for this and everything. I need to meditate. Let the food rest in your mouth and focus on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt? Maybe. Pepper? Too obvious? Oregano? Basil? Maybe, but there's something else. Something dark? Something spicy? You dig deeper. 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 Yes, even deeper still until you find it. Could it be- he really did it! How bold! How adventurous to use, uh... Try to go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it and realize this information was meant to remain a secret, and yet, now you know. A mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. As you look around, you realize that everyone in the room is consumed by this lunch. No one knows that you travel through space and time. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if I could uh, talk to you for a moment. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? Haha, <laughs> how about to come out and ask? It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. Uh, it's no big deal. It's just you meet your talk and I keep a secret in fact. That's some of my own that do on the trade. What's the rush? This mess is only getting started. We got two more whole days to get to know each other. It's clearly not gonna give up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? You've got a moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone and leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use. Uh, something my great grandmother taught me. You never have guessed that. In fact, I'm not even sure where you'd even get some if you searched. And, uh, definitely isn't the flavor you tasted before. So now you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe, but you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. Boy, well, wrapped up in the huge revelation, he knows that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. Or else is still in the cafeteria, he decided to look for him. You find out Colonel Sanders outside, standing at the quad. What up, dog? Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I have to come outside and look at the school buildings, think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. Sounds like you have big plans. Ah, uh, dare I say the biggest. What's the biggest? I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. I will have my own kingdom. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Neg him. Neg? The fuck is neg? A light insult wrapped in the package of a compliment used by pickup artists to gain and maintain the attention of women who possess uncommon beauty. These women are immune to standard compliments. The classic neg. You have beautiful nails, are they real? Not really. Oh, I guess that's still cool. That's really cute, your nose wiggles when you speak. No, it doesn't. Haha, <laughs> there it goes again. Sorry, it's just really cute. I kept- I just kept tossing neg after neg at that tent standing by the barn. She loved it. It was giving me crazy Kino. What's Kino mean? This is so fucking weird. So it's neg him with your- to show your own strength. Wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. That won't work because it's 11 herbs and spices. Be modest but thoughtful. I'm gonna be that one. Well, I just want to tell you I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. God, I'm fucking great. The flavors are complex but comforting. The interplay between salt, savory, and peppery was, was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Joss and Possum. I'm sure it'd be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feelings about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. Whoa! We step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place, it's magnificent. Finally, we have to show our stuff. Wait a second, oh no, we have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? I'm not gonna blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're gonna earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Got it. Welcome to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. <gasps> No! Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. No! No! 
No, this is all wrong. No, look, she's crying. Oh my god, I'm a monster. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is. Me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Should draw some possum up a payoff station. Without you as a partner, Miriam was left standing all alone and pouty, with two different students quickly taking notice. Hello, new partner. Beep, woo. Oh my. Two potential partners, I'm so certain, but I don't know who to choose. Looks like I should pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? I get to choose this shit. Alright. Well, I feel like Clank's a, a fucking joke. But Pop had to be getting here somehow, right? <sighs> I'm thinking Pop. Just because, like, he's probably like a child prodigy. Her face. Sorry, Clank, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Pop today. Weird. Pop gives a big smile and steps up to the same stage as Miriam. I'm a chef! He holds up a banana without peeling it, probably eats the entire thing. It's just concerning that Miriam is too kind to act grossed out. Well, I love your enthusiasm, Pop. She looks at you like really this kid, but it's too late to change your choice now. Let's not focus on your own cooking with classwork. Alright, you two for chase, I shall go to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two friends to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest your partner? Hmm. Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy and you need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' in mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. So steak tartare is too fancy. Octopus is too weird. Now, if we make a potatoes and gravy, like Mama used to make it, make it feel all home style and fashion and like nostalgic, and I'll be at the scene about it too where the guy takes a, he eats the thing, it's a flashback of his childhood. Everyone be like, oh, you guys are making potatoes and gravy? Oh, we're so much better. We made this fucking gigantic dumb thing with the fucking whatever fuck. And then like you bite it, you take a little, you know, and it's like the best thing ever. So I think Colonel Sanders will like mash potatoes and gravy. Yeah, yeah, boy, yeah. God, I've always been something of a down-home chef myself. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. I think we can make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn it away, because <laughs> it's Colonel Sanders. I'll get the potatoes. No, no, please let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Oh god, go away. It looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners, mind your business. Sanders' heart is my business. You better keep your fingers off of my man. Yeah, someone call for me? Uh, no, jeez, Van Van. Uh, well, I'm over here crushing Jocelyn Possum's dreams. You're supposed to be taking care of the classwork. That was the deal, remember? God, her fucking face. Colonel Sanders returns arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into a boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, how do they, eh, Ashley and Van Van? Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no, they like Jocelyn Blossom and Sterling, so we offer to give him them a hand. Oh, them. See, you could be any gender. You know how it is, these young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was gonna say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could uh, teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe uh, one day I might be able to get a up on my level. Ha, <laughs> doubt it. Don't be rude, Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to cut, con 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 concoct. Why is it so difficult to say? Concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. Oh, she's winking. God. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that's positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we could cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel. If you don't watch out, hey, Ashley is really gonna, going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders. Hunk of hunks in your time of need. Talk. T turn to Miriam, your favorite best you always has your back. So even though I want to fuck Colonel Sanders, I think that if, even if, like, if I'm looking for help, if I'm in my time of need, if I'm desperate, I'm going to look to my friend because that's who I know I can trust. You turn to Miriam and as soon as you find her, she senses it and looks back. This girl's friend in need radar is second to none. She immediately comes running over. Is somebody threatening my friend? I will destroy them. Yeah, Ashley and Van Van are just leaving. Leaving the dust vis-a-vis -vis my skills as the chef, perhaps, but stepping away 
in this competition. You're sorely mistaken. Me and your loyal friend are Joss Possum's my partner for today's activity. Oh, should I have picked Colonel Sanders? Fuck. You look for Sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be seen. Darn those cute quirkies in their short but sturdy stasher. Well, then your station realizes that in intention of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture, with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you knew so well. My attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand, holding a beautifully white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Ooh, gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. This result looks spectacular. I know would have been so proud. Oh my god. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but it doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all the madness and pressure in the crazy world stops. Oh my god. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together you did the utensil to the mashed potatoes and lift the heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, she knows she's, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid beautiful face. It's not beautiful, but... Then I do something! Scooping up a, a fingerful, Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will you ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Oh no, he's mad. Hold on right there, Josh and Pasha, would you not wish for the, the brew cooking area? Colonel Shannon's I expect better from you. But throw a washboard full, you'll both better be prepared to eat it wherever it lands. Can I have potatoes, face? Van Van rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. Jesus. Mashed potatoes with gravy, pathetic. Just a few minutes I prepared a full meal. Gave for my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in a silky saltwater sauce. Placed on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. This ends now. It is I who will have the first bite, and you will all look on with envy. Interrupting suitor rushes a van van and swipes at the bite of a signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about the dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned into the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. I uh, think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It killed him! Everyone step back, don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, you realize it's gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being soaked up in Pop's mouth. Pop whizzes the pain for just a moment that is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. Tastes like poison. The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock was has frozen the whole crowd. They are motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. Whoop, there goes gravity. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things despite obvious danger has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors should make enough money. Oh, well, it turns you a ghost over here. Seeing you're shaken up by the process that ruined student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. Sorry I had to go through all that. Please, let me walk you home. Uh, for real? Like, oh, come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quads and neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes that you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them reminded me of why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now I'd be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feels for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Jocelyn Possum? There's something I need to tell you. Hold oh, it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I've been working towards that dream day and night. Never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. <laughs> we should follow our dreams with all of our hearts that our souls may grab them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, you, I, no, shut up. I'm the one that's saying spiritual stuff. Be the story, start of the story. Oh, we're forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy. You can't prove that. Oh, so saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a, a long, sad sigh. Forget, hey, we're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I am the hero. <sighs> uh, I think I left the first door open later, nerds. How dare you threaten me just as I was letting my guard down and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. 
afraid. Be very afraid of me because I'm a monster, see? Is he rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? Before we discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence! What will you do? Attack. I go on the attack. Which attack? I will cook with love. Does one damage? It just got real. The attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. A hot gravy at me. I take a damage. I'm gonna I'm gonna defend. I will trepidation. So you continue to stay back and throw whatever comes your way. It seems like a weird, pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure, you do you. Attack defense is a legitimate strategy. Fuck you. Sport monster focuses their mashed mind, draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Well, apparently I'll attack. If I defend the game, will ridicule me. I'm gonna click love again. Spork monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. Spork monster uses utilitensile... Utility... Utilitensile. Oh my god. Take two damage. Take any more damage, you're not gonna survive this battle. I guess I'll attack. Spork monster is oozing cheese sauce into the lawn of the quad. I wonder who will have to clean this up. It's feeling vulnerable. Spork monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Rounded edge. Villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. <laughs> Amazing. Pot by power pinch. Pot by power pinch does 10 damage. Spork monster is defeated. You saved me. An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. Spare this wretched beast. You manage to tamp down your disguise at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize he is still a living creature with a pure soul deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you co dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I will forget this, and I will surely won't be back like you said. The spork monster scuffles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. At first, be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover find a library card tucked inside. The last name to assign on it is Borco. Hmm. Borco, that name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. By the energy, you keep your eyes open. Darkness overtakes you. Oh. Hello there. Hello there. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He, he must have helped you get home in your tired state. You don't know if you could have made it home without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled over you as you're tucked in tightly. Good night, my Colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there. Stretching your love dreams are weird. Oh my god. And that's it. Yeah, that's all we're gonna do for now. But uh, if you want to see me play the rest of this game, uh, let me know. This has been a lot of fun and hopefully you guys enjoy uh, enjoyed it. And I'm sorry about the lack of content, but um, I've been a little bit busy with, uh, with life and things. And um, it's been a bit tough to get motivated to do things. But hopefully this was enjoyable and uh, I had a good time. I'm not going to bed now because I literally got home and after a late shift and decided that I could, should record an episode because, yeah. So yeah, you guys have a good night. Day. Life, you know, and uh, eat good food. And uh, love your friends. Joss Possum, everybody. teach me to outrun cancer. <laughs>